Already? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's start it. So here is uh, uh, the new presentation of Red uh, for the DEF CON 2013. Uh, in fact, it's not really a, a full new presentation, but uh, just uh, an updated version of the last year presentation. So I will just present the red part, which is the part that has most changed during uh, last year. Uh, the red system part is almost the same, so uh, I will stop before red system. So let's start it. Uh, I will pass <laughs> rapidly that those facts hasn't changed, uh, except for the age, um, almost 42 now, uh, in a month. So getting older, time to finish red as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, so the usual uh, question for language uh, implementators, uh, why make yet another language? So the main reason is to be in full control of uh, my programming stack because I work with uh, black boxes all the time and it's getting in my way of doing things and especially when I need to get more performance or when I have to fix some complex issues I need to understand and know exactly what happens uh, on the whole programming stack so with uh, RED we are trying to design a language that gives you access uh, to the whole stack uh, down to the metal also, uh, one of the motivations for the RED project is to have a much faster Ripple-like language. A Ripple is absolutely great language, but it lacks, uh, it lacks some uh, features, like it's not general purpose enough, uh, and it's not uh, enough because it's not fast enough to cover any kind of needs uh, that a programmer can have. So RED is here to fix that. So for the people who are not knowing uh, what Ripple is, is a, a few very, very short overview. It's a very innovative programming language. It's nothing like you've seen before unless you've uh, used Lisp or Lisp-like family. So it brings a lot of new uh, advances in uh, programming languages, so it's very interesting to study uh, anyway for anyone. Uh, it was invented by the famous Carl Sassenras from Amiga OS. Uh, it's here since almost 15 years now, but uh, its author is not working on it anymore since at least two years now. Uh, anyway, uh, Carl decided to open source it in uh, December, so two months ago. But just the newer version, which is called Ribble 3, uh, Ribble 2, the last stable official Ribble version, is still closed source. So Ribble is open source, at least Ribble 3, so it's, I guess, time to celebrate that because people are asking for that and wanting that since many, many years. Uh, so it has happened now, but uh, it's maybe a bit more complicated than that. The reality might be a bit different. In fact, I think uh, it's probably uh, the end of uh, Ribble Free as we know it. Um, and uh, why, uh, why I think that? Uh, it's because uh, Carl is not working on it. So it's just given openly and for free on the internet. Uh, to anyone to use it and to improve it, but the main uh, programmer, the, the language father, is not working on it anymore. So, uh, by giving it away without continuing the work on it, what happens is that there's no lead developer uh, on this product. So, anyone and people will uh, pick up the sources and try to make it uh, resemble uh, their own vision. So what will happen is that 
every people uh, starting working on renewable free sources uh, has its own understanding, its own vision of how renewable free should be and how the language should evolve. So um, currently, it's it's a bit uh, confusing because. Uh, uh, even if the sources are available, available um, there's no really lead developer on it. So uh, we'll see what uh, this will uh, bring us. And uh, the most uh, probable effect of that is that uh, forks of Fribble Free will uh, appear and uh, take the lead because the main branch will uh, stay away and it's already happening with uh, a small company called uh, Safirion, which uh, took the lead on Ribble Free and is uh, uh, making its own uh, version of Ribble Free called Safir uh, with uh, specific evolution and probably diverging, a bit diverging uh, axis of uh, development. So it's uh, unlikely that uh, this kind of fork will uh, get uh, back to the main uh, branch uh, owned by uh, Carl. So, uh, in such case, in the open source world, what happens is that people start working uh, on their own fork, uh, fork version, and uh, sometimes uh, it can get very, very divergent from the original uh, vision. So, uh, we can even uh, think about how it could be to port Ribble Free to GVM, for example. That could be interesting, but probably diverge even more from the main uh, Ribble Free idea and vision. And I let you guess uh, what kind of port this one could be. So, uh, fortunately, Red is here. Yeah, Red is not really a fork, because it's not built from uh, Ribble Free sources but it implements most of its syntax and uh, semantics and in a, a completely new way uh, very differently from all other attempts to clone uh, Rebel uh, so it's taking a new way, a new road and we'll see where this uh, leads us uh, so why, why use a Rebel-like uh, language? Uh, the first reason is because it's simple uh, this might be a bit counterintuitive for people starting uh, looking at the documentation because it's not a C-like uh, language. Uh, it has a very different from uh, mainstream programming language syntax. Uh, is using a very more, a much more natural uh, syntax uh, approach, and it it's very interesting language because it's uh, it has a lot of uh, powerful abstraction, but very simple. So uh, you can already do a lot with it, with uh, what's built in. Uh, a very interesting uh, feature which comes from its uh, uh, Lisp uh, in heritage it, is that the language is its own data format. That's the at the art of uh, the code uh, is data paradigm that uh, Ribble implements. So uh, having its own data format it's a great uh, way to be more productive because you don't have to reinvent, reinvent the wheel each time you need to uh, serialize some data on disk or of a, of a socket connection. So you already have, have a, a data format available for you. It's Ribble and Ribble-like languages are, are paradigm neutral. So, what that means? It means that uh, above the Ribble kernel, you could implement pretty much any kind of uh, of programming paradigm. By default, it uses an imperative and functional style. Uh, Red does too, but you could replace uh, that layer with a full. Uh, object-oriented uh, class system, for example. So that's an interesting uh, uh, feature of the language. So it could be adapted to uh, other kind of use quite, uh, quite easily. So one of the distinctive also feature of Ribble-like language is that you get 
with its symbolic programming and metaprogramming abilities and uh, really strong metaprogramming abilities in a very simple way so that's uh, a very uh, useful feature for uh, modern programming also another uh, characteristic which is uh, very useful is uh, the ability of live coding so you have a console with an uh, interpreter and you are able to immediately test and uh, run your own code and explore the language so it's a great way to learn it it's a great way to debug and test your code in a very short and efficient uh, manner so it's really a must have feature also one of uh, the advantage of uh, ribble like language is the uh, strong abilities for building uh, DSL especially uh, thanks to symbolic uh, programming support and uh, uh, code and data code is data paradigm also there's a facility in ribble called parse which lets you specify in a declarative and very simple way uh, language grammar and simply implement uh, an interpreter or a compiler for it so it's really uh, efficient and quite simple to implement uh, DSL and uh, which are called in the ribble uh, case uh, dialects which are kinds of internal DSLs to the language so um, why use red uh, instead of uh, ribble well uh, red is, uh, implements most of Rebol syntax in uh, semantics rule, uh, rules but uh, red main uh, difference is that it's optimized for speed so uh, red performance are much greater about uh, an order of magnitude almost an order of magnitude in the uh, final uh, v1 version up to uh, several, ta uh, several hundred times faster We'll see, we'll see a bit later how it can be achieved. Uh, also, another difference from uh, all Ribol uh, incarnation and clones is that Red is able to uh, do system programming. So you have uh, direct access to low-level APIs from the OS, or you could even uh, directly access the metal from uh, Ribol itself. <coughs> Sorry. And this is thanks to uh, a specific dialect in uh, Ribble which is called Red System. We'll get back to it a bit later. Also, another strong focus in uh, Red. <coughs> another strong focus is the concurrency support. Currently, in, uh, we are living in a world of many, many calls, multi calls. System, uh, <coughs> system have at least two cores so we need to uh, be able from the programming language to take advantage of it and use this additional power in Ribble currently you don't have any way to do it uh, in Ribble 3 there's a uh, starting of uh, spreading, multi-spreading support through a, a new data type called task but it's not uh, fully implemented <coughs> in uh, red will go uh, beyond beyond all that and will implement an actor like abstraction to uh, take care of uh, the shared data uh, synchronization issue in uh, multi-threaded environments and will also implement some kind of tasking um, probably both in a co cooperative and preemptive uh, mode also another very interesting uh, thing that uh, we would like to have in red is uh, ability to have parallel processing so that mains, mainly applies to um, series in uh, red uh, so it's like the parallel collection from uh, Scala language for example so you'll be able to run loops on series and uh, uh, cutting the workload and dispatching it over several uh, different cores using uh, almost the same syntax as you use it for a simple uh, monothreaded uh, task 
also we will uh, leverage uh, SIMD uh, acceleration when it's uh, available. <coughs> Another characteristic of uh, Redis uh, that Redis doesn't depend on uh, third-party tools like the GCC uh, toolchain because uh, Redis is not built uh, with C. Uh, actually, it's not currently. It's not totally true because uh, we are bootstrapping Red using Ripple 2 and uh, very soon Ripple 3 too. So once we will uh, have the self-hosted version, we will be totally free from any other tools. So Red uh, builds in its own toolchain, full toolchain for uh, building uh, programs on all platforms. Also a big difference now between Red and Ripple uh, both Ripple 2 and 3 is that Red has a leader working hard on it every day. Um, so, <laughs> ah, might be. I should have cut <laughs> the Twitter. Back to okay. So let's start uh, an overview of uh, what uh, Red is. I won't go much into details, so uh, I will just give uh, an overview. So uh, Red, uh, oh, Red comes from Ribol, and Ribol's main uh, inspiration uh, is uh, Lisp language. But uh, Ribble takes also some ideas from force and logo language, especially for the dialects, uh, like dialecting uh, approach. Uh, so Red uh, directly uh, inherits uh, all of uh, Ribble benefits, and also Red is influenced uh, for some of its features by uh, the Lua language, especially for the embeddability uh, ability of Red which will be uh, on par with uh, Lua or maybe uh, more efficient. We'll see how the public API of Red uh, will look like. We'll try to make it even more sim uh, simpler and more efficient than Lua. Uh, and from Scala, some idea uh, from Scala compiler like uh, type uh, inference uh, engine which uh, a smaller one, a uh, simple one, is implemented in the Red System compiler. And uh, a, few e a few ideas from Scala uh, for the concurrency support. So, uh, here is a graph showing how the main, some of the main uh, programming languages are used uh, along uh, some scale of abstraction levels. So I try to place um, most of uh, the languages we use and know uh, on that scale to see how Ribble and how Red could uh, uh, compare with others. So as you can see, uh, on the lower, lower level of the, the <coughs> there is not much uh, languages that are taking care of that. It's mainly assembler and C language. And uh, as you can also see, one of the most used language in the world, Java, has a quite limited um, natural range of application. This doesn't mean that you can't do, you can't write a, an OS on Java. You can do that, but it's not meant for that. It, it never has been designed for that. Nor Java has been designed for scripting or building DSLs. Uh, one another, another thing interesting to notice is that uh, Ribble uh, shares uh, almost the same uh, range of application like uh, Ruby. So let's see how Red uh, stands there. Well, Red uh, aims at uh, covering the whole abstraction level uh, scale. So from metal up to DSL and maybe even beyond that. So how is it possible for a programming language to cover all those very different abstraction levels? Well, there's no 
there's no magic. The only way to do that is to have a low level counterpart of RED, which is a dialect called RED system, which use the same syntax like RED, and, but different lower level semantic rules for enabling the programming of uh, low level applications and interfacing with low level uh, features. So how does RED and RED system um, relate one to another? Well, it's quite simple. RED language is compiled to RED system source code in memory. And RED system source code is compiled to native code. Either in memory or directly in an executable file. So, uh, what is the main difference uh, between RED and RED system? Um, uh, you can see the difference in abstraction layer between these two languages by looking at how each one stores a single, a simple uh, integer uh, value in memory. So, in the case of RED system, uh, on the right side, uh, the integer is directly stored in a 32-bit uh, memory cell or in a 32-bit register, like most, most like C language. And on the left side, you see that uh, RED is using a uh, 128-bit uh, bit, uh, cells. So it's taking much more uh, memory than the lower level language. But RED is storing some meantime information about each value in those uh, memory cells. So it can accomplish much more in a much higher uh, abstraction layer than a RED system. Also, about the performance difference. Um, there's at least about one order of magnitude uh, performance difference between RED and RED system. So RED system is really designed for C-like code, very fast, very low level. Uh, at, for the V1 version, uh, RED system should perform on par with uh, uh, C compilers. Uh, on the other side, RED uh, will still have a factor of between 10 and 30 most probably uh, of uh, performance penalty compared to RED system or RED or C language. So uh, it will be much lower than low level languages, but it should be faster than most of scripting languages. In fact, uh, one, of the, one of the goals for RED is to become one of the fastest uh, scripting language. So uh, the completion uh, state, uh, RED system is in a beta uh, state since a year at least and RED uh, appeared about six months ago so it's still in alpha state and uh, we are working uh, hard, still hard on it. Uh, so uh, an interesting um, look at how RED uh, runs code. Um, inside what's happening. So RED is basically uh, a static compiler which is also called uh, an ahead of time compiler. So when you feed it with a RED script it will generate compiled code uh, with a, a RED system intermediary code so in the end you'll have native compiled code but this is not enough to support uh, some high-level uh, semantic rules like we could have in a rebel. So in order to uh, make it richer and higher level, an interpreter has been added to the language and it's built in the runtime. So each time you are compiling a RED program, an interpreter is uh, added to the final executable. And currently this interpreter is about 10 kilo bytes of code, so it's really small and it probably won't get above 20 kilobytes in uh, the final version. So the compiled code, the, comp the RED compiler, when uh, required, will uh, instead of generating native code uh, for RED expression, 
it will instead uh, generate uh, interpreter calls inside the compiled code and the uh, interpreter will also call back a uh, compiled function from uh, the compiled code. So they are tightly integrated and working to achieve the best performances, performances in all cases. But in some cases it's, just, it's even not enough. When you have, for example, uh, some big loops that are constructed dynamically, you want them to run much faster than uh, what the interpreter can do. So for that, we'll add a just-in-time compiler that will enable uh, compiling to native code, um, code, red code constructed at runtime. So the compiler code will be able to uh, fall back to the JIT compiler in cases where uh, it needs to run uh, nested loops much faster. But uh, the interpreter will also be able to uh, call the JIT compiler to compile some nested loops when it's required. And in the same way, the compiled code from the JIT compiler will be able to call back into the initially compiled code from RHEL or directly call the interpreter itself when he needs to. So all that happens totally automatically and transparently for the user. Uh, and the RHEL compiler decides at compile time or sometimes defer at runtime uh, which module should be used to execute the code the faster possible. Okay, so let's see uh, a very, very sm small and short e code example to see how it uh, applies to code because it's, it might be a bit too abstracted for most people. So here's a very simple um, code construction in uh, red which looks like uh, exactly like in uh, Rebel. So we create a block containing two items, uh, print and one. Print is a word which is the first class data type in red, like in Rebel. And we will extend that uh, block, which is simply a collection of items. We will extend it with two new elements, which are plus and two. So, <coughs> this kind of code pattern is typically not compilable, statically compilable by the red compiler, because a uh, red compiler cannot determine what, what code contains before running it. So typically here a uh, red static compiler will generate a call to the red interpreter and the red interpreter will calculate 1 plus 2 and will call print passing 3 as an argument to display it on screen. Here's another example using a function. So we define an inc function in red, which just increments a value by one, and we create a code, uh, a short code, applying inc to uh, two, and we do that block of code. So in such case, the compiler cannot all, cannot decide what to do with that, so it will call the interpreter also. In fact, you could argue that here uh, code is statically defined as a literal block, so it could be compiled, that's true. In such simple case, we could, uh, we could have a, a data flow analysis for code and uh, determine that it's a constant at least in such case of code, but it will work only in some very specific cases <coughs> and it won't be re reliable enough for general cases. And most of the time the static compiler won't be able to determine uh, what's in code. So just calling the interpreter it's the most simple and efficient way to, uh, to run it. In the last example Yeah, just one thing uh, before going to the last example. Uh, in uh, this case, uh, we have uh, the interpreter uh, running inc to expression, but uh, inc is a function just defined above, 
and this function has been compiled statically by Red Compiler. So the interpreter here will just run the root level of expression. So it will just push to on the red stack and call ink function. But the function, the ink function body won't be interpreted because the interpreter knows that ink has been compiled to native code, so it will just call the native code for ink. So the overhead of the interpreter is very small because it will just be used to interpret and resolve the part of the expression that can't be resolved at compile time. But if some code has already been, been compiled like this function, it will just fall back to the native code again when it can. So it's really optimal from that point of view. In the last example, we'll use a literal block for code when we, where we do a, a, a big loop for printing dots on the screen. And in such case, the compiler or the interpreter could be able to determine that uh, this loop could be much faster by being compiled to native code. So it will, instead of calling the interpreter, it will just call the JIT compiler to compile it to native code and run it. So all, as you can see, all that happens totally transparently for the user. <coughs> Another interesting uh, feature of RED, which is just the extension of uh, the concept you could find in the real world, uh, it is that we don't want to have to download hundreds of megabytes and uh, dozens of thousands of files to be able to program something. We want just one binary for everything. That's why RED is, is, will be distributed as a single, single binary on all platforms to make it simple and easy to install and use. So for example, to compile the RED script and run it from memory directly, you just invoke RED with the script name. If you want to generate an executable from the compiled version of the script, you just specify an additional option on the command line. When you need to cross-compile, the script can be very easily done in RED, which allows you to RED allows you to cross-compile from any platform to any other platform that RED supports. And for that, you just need to pass a minus T command line option and an ID designing the target platform. Currently we support about seven or eight uh, target platforms, including uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android on R RLM, and uh, even Arduino, uh, some form of Arduino platform. So the red, uh, binary will also be able to directly compile a red system ex uh, script. So currently we have two compiler in the bootstrapping uh, version of uh, red, uh, which are run from sources. We don't have yet that uh, single binary, uh, but we will merge them in a single one. So we'll be able to, we'll be able to compile both red and red system scripts and programs uh, directly from the command line with the same binary and the red compiler will just uh, analyze the uh, header of the script to determine which kind of code it, it needs to compile. Uh, in order to launch, launch red in a console mode you'll just type red and that's all. Uh, if you want to run, uh, to compile a, a CGI script uh, written in red you just pass the minus C option and you'll get a compiled executable uh, that could be run as a CGI. If you omit the minus O script.cgi, so the target file, uh, RED will just call the interpreter and run it from memory directly, like Rebel does, which for a CGI script could be interesting because you are paying a, a bigger uh, 
boot time if you need to compile it first. So making it run through the interpreter might be a better strategy in such case. Also, it's possible to from write to <coughs> to compile shared uh, libraries, and uh, it will be also possible to compile static libraries and probably even uh, objects directly that could be reused in other languages like uh, C tool chains. So there are many more options, but uh, we'll just stop that, stop there. Um, so what are the target platforms uh, currently? Uh, so we address the desktop main platforms. Um, we also have some uh, less used but, but interesting uh, platform like uh, Stylable. Uh, we've started working uh, on a FreeBSD port, but uh, we don't have any FreeBSD experts uh, among our team. So currently it's on hold, but we would like to support if so if some FreeBSD system programmer is uh, interested, uh, there's an opportunity to join us for making the FreeBSD port. Also, uh, it could be interesting to uh, to make a port to IQ, uh, but the main issue with IQ is that the whole uh, API is in C++, which, make it, uh, which makes it quite hostile to any other language than uh, C++. For the embedded uh, platforms, we have uh, PowerShell support for Android devices, so we can compile for Android platforms, and we can run, run a native card directly on Android platform, but we don't have a package generator, nor we have yet uh, an interface to call the Android API, but we are working on it and we will provide uh, a full Android API solution for Red. Also, we would like after that to support iOS devices. We already fully support the Raspberry Pi uh, devices, so we can run exactly and change uh, any Red or Red system program on it. And we can even run the, some of the bindings, in fact, all the bindings, uh, we have with uh, Red and Red System like the GTK Plus binding, so you can write a very short uh, code for GTK Plus binding uh, in Red and uh, compile it directly from Windows, for example, for the Raspberry Pi, transfer it for, to the Pi and run it there. Exactly unchanged, uh, like you would do it on Windows, Linux or anything else. We have also limited uh, support for Arduino boards, uh, actually just uh, Javier uh, 8-bit. Uh, I don't know, we'll see how the market 